Good morning and welcome to Live in a Greenhouse on YouTube. If you're new here, this channel is about my journey to design, build, and then live in the first greenhouse enclosed tiny home in the United States. I purchased this property on a small island in the northwest corner of Washington State during the height of the pandemic. It rains a lot here, so one of my top reasons for the greenhouse is to have outside space that's out of the rain. It took almost a year to get my building permit, so to not incur further delay and expense, I didn't even attempt to get variants from the building code, which you'll see with all the weather stripping and even rain scuppers on the flat portion of the roof. Mike and Nate are back this week to install the exterior doors and start the siding. So stay tuned as the house finally gets dried in. What's this? Matt and Mike's first sight of an antique in-wall ironing board I will use when quilting. It will need a little modification to fit in the intended space. Then on to the main task for today installing the doors. This is one key difference between building a house inside a greenhouse versus a standard house. With a standard house, it has to be dried in before rough electrical, insulation, and drywall. Because the doors were so late arriving, if we'd had to wait for them, we'd be at least another month behind schedule. finished floor will be level with this threshold. When Matt returned, they did a walk around reviewing the siding details. It'll be a mix of different colors for horizontal cedar and vertical cedar, plus corrugated metal. Matt has marked on the Tyvek which material goes on each surface, but there are also printed colored elevations hanging on the greenhouse wall for reference. A lot of details to work out, like how the siding and roof will meet. How the metal will be trimmed. And the cat tore it through the metal in the corner there. And that's gonna, well, that's gonna go to the metal. So, I know it's gonna go through the sheet on too. So, yeah, yeah, so we gotta come down. How the cedar and metal will meet on the inside corners. How to flash for the ramp that will approach the front door. Mm -hmm. 
how the cedar will meet the window frames. 12 footers going up, and then across here is 8 footers, and then 12 footers. How the cedar will frame the scuppers. No, we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, that, the, the, the palm line will be wrapped up around the, um, and it's, yeah, yeah, so it's gonna get a clump of it. We can just get one piece around here. Oh yeah, that'll be fine. We'll be able to roll that. And the moment we've all been hating for, how the siding and pool liner will meet. There was extra head scratching on that one. The rubber liner for the pool is 60 feet by 20 feet and weighs about 300 pounds, plus another piece for the pond where they're standing is about 100 pounds. So we want to get it right the first time and only move those pieces once. Dave got onto painting furring strips while Mike finished the doors. A lot of materials have been accumulating, so Nate cleared the work area while Mike started on the soffits. The cedar siding is plain one by stock, so the visual interest will be provided by shadow lines from small gaps between the boards, which means wrapping those sections of the house in black paper rather than the white Tyvek. Then furring out the walls, so the siding will be flush with the window casing and raised from all the hurricane straps in these walls. Mike started applying the siding while Nate continued furring the next face.
I already like the black better than the white from the tie back. This flashing will be a siding colored barrier between the foundation and what will be a concrete path to the door's threshold. and then siding continued until it was time for Mike and Nate to head to the ferry. I temped in the first inline fan for the air to ground heat exchange system in the food garden. I haven't had a chance to learn the programming, but it's moving air and the exhaust is 12 degrees cooler than the intake. And there you have it, a couple months late, but the doors are finally in place and the house is closed in. Please like and subscribe and come back next time when Mike progresses to the second siding color and the drywall finishing team arrive.